Talk about Dr. Lal Path Labs though. The Q3 performance was quite disappointing. The revenues came in below street estimates. Non-COVID growth is also quite subdued. Dr. Om Manchanda, the MD of Dr. Lal Path Labs, joins us now to discuss the Q3 performance. Dr. Manchanda, thanks a lot for being with us uh, on the channel. I want to first start by asking you about the impact that competitive intensity has had on your industry, especially in uh, you know some of the key markets like NCR. I ask because um, you know over the last few four, five quarters, you've seen subdued growth, not just from your own company, but across the industry. Do you think things could get worse before they get better? And what is your own expectation on volume growth? I mean, this time it was 5% for the quarter. Is this something that you'll have to work with for the next few quarters as well? Uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, I think uh, within the industry, we are industry leaders and uh, our growth rates have been uh, pretty good, double digit for both on quarter as well as on YTD basis. Uh, uh, growth actually has come from all across all the regions. And uh, your question related to competitive intensity, I think over the last few quarters, we have seen uh, sort of a subdued com competition. And many of these people also have taken price increases. So I would actually say that our quarter while uh, it's been uh, lower than expectation on volumes, but in terms of uh, in, in terms of value, I think it's pretty uh, in line with uh, what we expected. But do you think you will be able to do that double-digit growth that you had stated earlier? Is that your uh, you know stated guidance even now by the end of FY24 and FY25 on the top line? So both on quarter as well as on YTD, our uh, value growth uh, is double-digit. Uh, we are nearly about ten percent. And uh, uh, this is coupled with both volume as well as revenue per patient. And revenue per patient definitely has impact of price increase, which we took last year. Uh, we hope to actually improve our performance and volumes going forward. Uh, but we still very hopeful that we will be able to meet this double digit number. Right. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Lal, uh, you know, generally the belief is, uh, morning Prashant here, uh, that you yeah. will <clears throat> outdo whatever industry grows at, right? Uh, now, could you give us some ways, I'm talking about volume here, could you give us some sense on uh, what, what that might be? How do you think about that number? Uh, what will the industry do and what will you do on top of it? And also on prices, uh, where are we at, sir? Because I don't think you've taken any price increases in the last uh, in the past year. And when will we see any increases? When is it going to be possible? Go on. Actually, volumes have two components. One is number of samples, number of tests that we do. Uh, that number has uh, grown very significantly, nearly about 7-8%. It's the number of patient visits. The, the, it's not about unique patients, actually, number of patient visits. Now, that footfall can actually be impacted by uh, disease incidence, season per se. Uh, uh, we've also seen some impact of uh, bundling uh, on the footfall. I'll, I'll give an example of, let's say, fever panel. Earlier, people would come for individual tests like dengue separately, malaria separately. Now we have one fever panel, so one visit does it all. So to that extent, volume definitely gets impacted. So I would say that we are looking at revenue per patient being impacted by multiple variables, not just for fall. And the number that you see on volume growth, actually, it's not about unique patient. These are all about patient visits to our lab. Now, since you know that our industry is need-based, it's not a want. So... As and when the need is there, people would come. So overall, we have seen in the industry, the volume growth has been subdued compared to last couple of years. Now, there's been one hypothesis that is there any fatigue setting in because after COVID, people want to give mm -hmm. it a pause. There's so much of testing that has happened. So let's see how it goes. But I think overall diagnostics will continue to remain the mainstay within the uh, within the healthcare. So the thing to watch so is what? Sample, sa uh, is it, uh, you know, when we say volume, is it uh, the thing to watch is what? Samples, number of patients? Or revenue per patient? I would say actually all uh, revenue per patient because that's a combination of many things. It's, it's a mm. footfall. It's also a mixed change because a lot of high-end tests being ordered now as the medicine goes into evidence base. So you will see that higher order tests being, uh, being prescribed also does impact revenue per patient. So there are multiple factors at play in terms of pushing the revenue per patient up. And we have seen the bundling, uh, which is our source fit, uh, nearly about 30 tests in one go and actually pushes up the revenue as well. So there are multiple variables that play to look at it. So volume alone is not is not the variable. Okay, all right. Uh, good morning, Dr. Manchanda, and always good to see you again. Since you spoke about Swash Fit, uh, let's take that forward. It currently contributes close to 20% of the mix. It ends the year closer to around 500 crores in terms of revenues. I wanted your thoughts on that. And what about next year? How do you see this scaling up? It's scaled up beautifully till now, 
But on an annual basis, what kind of revenue number will you be looking at from Swasfit? Swasfit, I think last two, three quarters, we've seen it's stabilizing, as you rightly said, about 19, 20%. I don't see this number now sharply moving up. We are seeing one very interesting trend now um, of bundling on higher end test. Uh, so far, it's been more on routine tests where, where patients can on their own come and get the checkup done. But I have seen even within the medical fraternity now, they are looking at bouquet of tests which can actually help them diagnose something early and in one go itself. So we are seeing some pattern of uh, demand of Burnley happening on higher order tests as well. Uh, in terms of growth going forward, uh, I think it's a very well laid out strategy that we keep repeating often, which is about go deeper in northern eastern markets. That's where our brand is very strong. And mm -hmm. uh, you must have seen that we've been talking about tier three, tier four towns. And I think uh, the entire state of UP, uh, Bihar or rest of north, we are just going deeper as much as possible. Uh, go wider in south and west because those are the places where our brand is a long way to go and we are looking at some of the larger towns and that's where our whole inorganic and organic both strategies come in play. All right, and tier 2 and tier 3, currently how much do they contribute as a percentage of your revenues? I think it is around 30%. Yeah, we've started giving this data for the last two, three quarters for our own okay. sort of growth, as for our own tracking as well. Nearly about okay. 30 odd percent of our business is actually coming from that part of the pop strategy. And it's growing at what clip in comparison to the NCR region? I don't have that number exactly, but definitely it's okay. higher than our portfolio growth because that's where the large population is sure. uh, for us to drive. Mm. Okay, okay well, Manjana, just that point on higher order tests, what do you mean? Uh, sorry, I didn't quite understand. Are you saying that okay. medical professionals are ordering them or are you saying that expensive tests are being bundled together via these packages? No, no, what happens, uh, I know it's a little technical uh, in terms of, let's say someone who comes from a cancer test. Now, normally uh, earlier a test will be prescribed for histopathology. Now a mm. test is also being done for histopathology as well as uh, gene sequencing. So they are all clubbed together. So from the same sample, uh, uh, medical fraternity or doctors would want to have all the tests being done rather than uh, samples being sent again and again. Though that's the early stage, but I do see that pattern happening. Okay. Uh, so, you know, overall, I just wanted to understand that you did mention that competition has eased a bit, but how is the online aggregator competition at the moment? Because, you know, in the last 12 to 18 months, there was a big spike up that we saw <clears throat> in terms of online aggregators. Has that eased as well? And what do you think is the way forward now? What are the, you know, consumption patterns looking like? So, let me correct myself. I don't think competition is eased, but I think okay. I would say it's become level playing. Uh, they're all there. Uh, earlier, I think there was a lot of deep discounting which was going on, and I think that is probably uh, coming down. But uh, competition is still there. This industry has always been very competitive. Uh, while some of these competition is visible that you and I see, uh, but there is a very highly unorganized sample, uh, unorganized industry as you go down the pop cetera. So competition is still is pretty much there because the entry barriers are not that high in this space. So this revenue per patient, right, that we were you were talking about a while back, do you think it will be hard to scale that up given the kind of competition that is present? Uh, I think so far, last four, five years, uh, industry has not taken the price increase. and, and uh, But over the last sort of few quarters, we've seen some trend towards that. So to my mind, I think ability to take price increase on some of these tests may be easier now going forward. Uh, okay. Second is, as I mentioned to you, the mix is also changing. It's just not routine tests which are being ordered now, high-end tests being ordered. That's also a favorable impact on revenue per patient. Uh, but I would say that as a company, we would definitely keep an eye on expanding our footprint and keep our mm. value proposition, the price value equation very, very strong. So to me, a pricing definitely would be a last resort. Now, coming to your question of revenue per patient, I think it's uh, it, we'll have to see as, as we go along. But okay, it'll be a right, combination of both volumes and RPP, yeah. Final question from my end, Dr. Manchanda. Give and take everything, you know, the industry dynamics, your, the way you are running your business as well, changing the mix. What is the sustainable margin outlook uh, from year on? Uh, absolutely. I think you've seen the number this year. We have expanded our margin profile, yes. both operating margin as well as net margin. We run our FEO business very efficiently. And we will continue to do that. We have actually... Um, brought in a lot of technology to run our processes very, very efficiently. We'll continue to do that. And uh, we should operate within the range of 25, 26%, uh, though we are hovering slightly higher than that. 
but i would definitely reinvest some of that into back into growth all right we leave it at that thanks a lot for joining in appreciate your thoughts here on cnbc tv 18 by the